Hello everyone, welcome to today's session. Um, I will be talking about uh, what it takes to build an internal developer platform um, for the future. Right. So uh, <clears throat> my name is Noan Dias. I work as a VP and Deputy CTO for WSO2. Uh, I'm also the co-author of a book called Microservices Security in Action. And you can find my LinkedIn and Twitter handle here on this slide. It goes as uh, Noan Dias. And uh, I'm happy to uh, collaborate with like-minded people and, and chat about any anything interesting in, in, in this subject area. So uh, to begin with, uh, let's look at why we need an internal developer platform in the first place, right? So, so the reason is, I guess, pretty simple. The reason is manufacturing software in, in today's world is an extremely hard job, right, in the cloud native world. And why is that? Because, you know, because it's not because we don't know how to write code, right? We, we know how to write code as developers. And today we have AI and lots of other tools that can help us in writing better code as well. The problem is in getting this code into production. A functional piece of code, getting it into production <clears throat> is, a, is a very hard task. And, and doing it uh, repeatably and without breaking you know other stuff is extremely hard. Uh, there are lots of tools and processes involved uh, in this uh, process of getting uh, software from code to production, such as DevOps, CI, CD, configuration management, environments, SRE, SecOps, and so on, right? Now, while there are tools and technologies that assist us in each of these little things wiring up together, is a tremendously hard task and that is why <coughs> uh, internal developer platforms exist they wire up all these things together so that developers can forget about implementing all of those things and get their code into production in a streamlined fashion so that basically is the reasons why uh, an internal developer platform exists now, uh, based on the definition uh, of an internal developer platform from uh, done by Humanitech, uh, <clears throat> you can see that it it focuses on doing uh, things that typically what we call as a platform engineering team would do. Now, the process that is involved in get, getting a piece of code uh, from your development time into production uh, is typically conducted by what we define as a platform engineering team. Things like injecting configurations, the, uh, con uh, configuring environments, uh, configuring CI/CD <coughs> pipelines. These are all tasks of a <coughs> platform engineering team. Uh, now, what an internal developer platform does in its currently defined scope and definition is basically automating the process of the platform engineering team. That's what it does. And it's all good in that context, right? Because <clears throat> the platform engineering team has to do a lot of repeatable and recurring tasks in order to get a piece of code from development all the way into production. So automating that is a really good thing. Um, and it basically gives developers a self-serviceable way in order to get their code into production, right? And this is not a rare or, or one-time occurrence. This is actually a common theme across many enterprises. Like Gartner has basically found out that there are many CIOs in many organizations building internal developer platforms uh, for the same purpose, right? Now, if you look at the five core elements of an internal developer platform as it is defined today, uh, <clears throat> this is how it goes as. So there is application configuration management, which deals with things like um, how you inject and manage configurations for your applications, things like database credentials, connectivity URLs, and so on, right? How do you deal with injecting this into your application? And then comes infrastructure orchestration, right? So if you want infrastructure for your application and you want to provision new infrastructure, you want to scale up and down the infrastructure based on the needs of your application, all of that is handled by infrastructure orchestration in an internal developer platform. Then comes environment management, right? Different application teams would require different environments to be created dynamically, right? And that is a tedious and rep uh, repeating task that platform engineering teams would have to do. Therefore, an internal developer platform takes care of that aspect. And then, come deploy then comes deployment management, which is basically taking care of how do you promote your code from environment to environment, right? What are the processes involved, CI, CD, right, um, 
and all or rather pipelines involved so deployment management takes care of all those aspects and finally comes RBAC or role based access control which is basically dealing with who can do what on the internal developer platform such as who can deploy code who can promote it to production who can inject configurations and so on now if you look at this it's very clearly visible that these are all tasks that would have under, otherwise be, been done by a platform engineering team. So an internal developer platform in its current scope is trying to automate these tasks of a platform engineering team. However, uh, we have to remember <coughs> that the consumer or a user of, the, of this internal developer platform is at the end of the day an application developer. right? Uh, so while there are lots of recurring tasks that the platform engineering team does, there are also a lot of recurring tasks that application development teams have to do in order to get their code into production, right? So an internal developer platform, as it is defined today, does not take care into, uh, in, it does not take into consideration the repeatable tasks that application developers have to do on a day-to-day -day basis in order to develop and uh, deploy their applications, right? So to understand this further, let's look at <clears throat> what a typical cloud native application looks like. So in any, any organization, there will be some kind of storage layer, some kind of system of records. So these can be databases or other systems such as you know, Salesforce or NetSuite and so on, where you have different kinds of uh, system of uh, records uh, defined. And then you will have the domain services uh, that operate on this uh, persistent systems or systems of record, right? So if you're familiar with domain driven design, you will have uh, domain services that operate on this data. And this data is, you know, read and manipulated by some kind of client application. Now, some of these client applications can be UI driven applications such as web apps and mobile apps. Some, some can be headless applications such as scheduled jobs that run every night or on a scheduled clock, right? So based on the nature of these applications you may require a bff or what we call as a backend for front end layer uh, <clears throat> for creating the experiences required for those respective client applications right so at a very high level this is what a typical cloud native application uh, looks like now <clears throat> when implementing this kind of an application let's go through a few things that application developers have have to constantly think through and implement in order to develop and deploy this kind of an application. The first one of them that we are going to talk about is how you organize, organize your work, right? Now, <coughs> application developers, they think in terms of services, APIs, and jobs, right? That's basically their thinking pattern. They think in terms of domain-driven design and bounded context and so on, right? Now, this is basically day-to-day -day, uh, regular uh, task for application developer. So if you are an application developer who understands the business problem and who understands the application architecture, it's not a big deal coming up with uh, the services that you have to implement, the APIs that you have to expose, the domains that you have to define and so on, right? That is, uh, uh, that, that is uh, business as usual for application developers. What's not so intu intuitive is how you implement these concepts onto the runtime environment, onto the platform, right? So different teams might use different mechanisms. Some way, <coughs> some may choose to implement these as you know, as these domains as Kubernetes namespaces. Some may use uh, network policies. Some may use a combination of both, right? Now this is what is not so intuitive to application developers to implement. Right. So every organization has to think through this problem, has, has to think through how they map uh, their business domains and, uh, <coughs> and uh, services uh, and projects and how they implement it in the runtime environment. Right. But an internal developer platform completely understands uh, all the way from the source code and to where it is stored, uh, to what kind of services are being deployed and all the way through to the runtime environment. Therefore, an internal developer platform can perfectly provide an abstraction to application developers so that they can continue thinking on their terms that they are familiar with, such as projects, services, APIs, and so on, 
and implement it uh, using an opinionated fashion right that will serve more than 80 or 90 percent of the use cases that uh, many organizations have to deal with so this can save a lot of time in terms of uh, app developers or engineers having to figure out how to implement these concepts that they are familiar with onto the runtime environment the second one that application developers have to think about is api management now in today's context api management is seen as an additional step in the software development life cycle you write the code in one place you deploy it in one place and then you come into another system known as an api management system and then you come into there to <coughs> do api management to document your api and so on but this is an uh, additional and unnecessary burden on application developers because most of the time when you're deploying an api uh, all you need to know is how you need to expose that api and to whom you need to expose that api to for example if it's a public api <coughs> uh, currently developers have to figure out how they are going to expose it into the public internet right what are the domains they are going to use how they are going to deal with security uh, uh, where are they going to terminate authentication and so on right now if you are exposing your apis to internal cons consumers you basically have to rethink uh, <coughs> the same set of problems in the context of exposing them internally right uh, and you have to now go and configure some kind of api management system in order to implement those uh, rules that you have in mind but an internal developer platform understands where your apis are running and understands whether they have to be exposed externally or internally and therefore can perfectly offer uh, a built-in and default solution default api management solution so that developers don't really have to think about api management unless there are exceptional use cases that you have to deal with but 80 90 percent of the case this can be seen as a built-in and default feature another one such complicated area that developers have to deal with is version management the version management is a complicated space you need to think about <coughs> where do you uh, keep your versions what is the version going into your source code what is the version going into your docker tag what is the version that you are exposing uh, through to the api how do you run different versions on the same environment how do you do canary testing uh, <coughs> and so on right so this is a vast space that Developers in every organization and every team have to repeatedly think about and solve for themselves. But in most of the cases, a standard generalized solution will solve more than 80-90% of the use cases and an internal developer platform can offer a perfectly viable solution or opinion on how you should, do, should be doing version management and, and that will save a lot of time uh, from the engineering teams, right? <coughs> Another common problem developers have to deal with is sharing reuse and governance right how do i discover what other people have already built and can i reuse them how do i share my work within the rest of the organization so that other people can reuse my work right how can i govern the use of public cloud services so that i don't have to deal with a huge cloud bill at the end of the day right so an internal developer platform can perfectly offer a marketplace solution which can deal with all these problems and uh, give you uh, uh, an environment where you can by default uh, share your work with other people and share uh, work done by other people throughout the platform without thinking and reinventing solutions to these kinds of problems <clears throat> another one of the complicated areas that developers have to deal with is identity management authentication and authorization right our typical web applications authentication would be simple you log you connect to an id uh, an identity provider <clears throat> and you log in and get a get an access token to access api <clears throat> but uh, we all know that the devil is in the details right <clears throat> now many developers have to deal with problems such as uh, how do i do role back role based access control on my api operations right so <clears throat> my business logic or code is running behind an API gateway. Now, how do I propagate the user context information from the client all the way through to my business logic so that I can read and understand who the user is that is accessing my code and what are these users' roles and permissions, right? These are all problems that many de developers have to repeatedly think about and solve for themselves. 
but an idea p understands this entire flow end to end and can perfectly offer a default and built in solution that deals with these uh, problems right and finally uh, insights are another area of uh, uh, massive importance for internal uh, for engineering teams right so there are three three types of in, uh, insights that are important observability for debugging and troubleshooting purposes runtime insights to uh, get an idea of what services are running and how well they are running and um, uh, whether they are useful or not so that you can plan your roadmap accordingly and also engineering insights to determine how well you are doing in terms of delivery and quality right what is the time taken to deliver from dev to production and idfp understands all of this data and can offer all those <coughs> all these insights as built-in features so an ideal internal developer platform would look like something like uh, this. It will basically allow you to run your entire SDLC all the way from design into running and, uh, and uh, uh, reinventing or basically uh, 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 operating, right? Uh, and also offering capabilities that not just focus on automating the platform engineering process, but also focus on automating the repeatable and recurring uh, tasks of application development or engineering teams. So that's it for my message for today. I hope this information has been useful and will help you in, this, in uh, uh, designing or buying your internal developer platform. Thank you very much.